Hello, I'm the Awesome Tutor, and today we're going to be continuing with the social changes topic in Mao's China, this time looking at healthcare. Okay, let's begin. Now remember, with the social changes topic, they're most likely going to ask you questions on improvement. And to judge improvement, you need to know the situation before and after. So, what was the situation before 1949? Well, Healthcare was very rudimentary. They used traditional methods like acupuncture and herbalism, where they used plants as medicine. And healthcare in the rural areas was virtually non existent. There were some hospitals built in the 1920s and 1930s, uh, but that was mainly confined to the cities, and there were very, very few. Um, with the CCP in power, now, Public health spending was not really a priority for the regime. In fact, spending on healthcare never rose above 2.6% of the government budget. Okay? Because, well, they were focused on other things, like industry, like the military, for example, during the Korean War. Obviously, that was a big drain on the Chinese economy. So what happened, so, so what happened is that funds were diverted from areas like healthcare to industry and the military in order to fund Mao's ambitious plans. So instead of spending heavily in healthcare and investing in research to improve the quality of healthcare, the regime focused on disease prevention. Let's look at how they did this. Well, they used um, campaigns called the Patriotic Health Campaigns, where they sent party members to educate the peasants in the countryside, teaching them about personal hygiene and how to catch pests that would spread disease. And what was very common in the rural areas was that they used their own feces to fertilize the crops. Okay, Because, well, many of the peasants were, were of course, ignorant, and they did not know about basic health care. So, what the party cadres did is they discouraged the use of human fertilizer and they taught them about basic health care. And that was actually a very huge success. Okay, all these diseases were virtually eliminated in the countryside and tuberculosis and parasitic diseases were significantly reduced. Medical facilities. Now, the communes established in 1958 during the Great Leap Forward, they had medical clinics. So, people had guaranteed access to healthcare, albeit very poor quality healthcare, but if you're looking at improvement, it was better than nothing. Over 800 Western-type hospitals were built, but the limitation of this was they were mainly confined to the city. So rural areas, the quality of healthcare there did not experience significant improvement. Okay? So, Doctors. Well, many doctors were trained. Not as many as, as you would hope. You know, 40,000 in 1949 to 150,000 in 1965. It did increase, but was it enough to provide for China's massive population? Not really. And these were professional doctors. Doctors trained in modern techniques, so able to deal with complex diseases and procedures. And now, during the 1960s, medical schools were graduating 25,000 doctors per year. So, it seems as though there was some improvement. But as I told you, this is mainly limited to the cities. So what Mao did is he created the Barefoot Doctors Initiative. Okay, here's a Barefoot Doctor right there, that poster. So they were in trade intensively for six months. So they received very basic healthcare training. But the good thing was they were cheap for the government. Okay, as I told you, the government could not afford to divert funds away from its ambitious plans like industry and like the military. Okay, so this was very good for the government. Uh, and however, obviously the quality still remained low. They, were, they only had basic training. The manual that they were given had no medical theory whatsoever. It was only a summary of common symptoms in the countryside. Okay, and obviously the village clinics, such as those in the communes, had poor equipment and low supplies. But, if you're talking about improvement, what was, this, what was the situation before? Well, the rural areas basically had no health care whatsoever. So, was this an improvement? Yes, it was. And here are some statistics to show the extent of that improvement with the Barefoot Doctors Initiative. 
Okay, so I guess in terms of analysis, you could say qu quantity of healthcare provision, yes, significantly improved. Quality, not that much. Life expectancy, well, you have some statistics here, clearly increased during this excessive healthcare policy. Now, some questions might ask you um, about social policies from 1949 to 1957, because they want to avoid uh, disruptions like the Great Leap Forward, the famine, and, and the Cultural Revolution. So if your question is from 1949 to 1957, use this statistic. If your question covers the whole date range, then use the, this statistic in 1970. Okay, so speaking of disruptions, what were these disruptions? Well, we had the Antis campaigns in the 1950s, where 800,000 people were killed in the first half by the first half of 1951. Obviously, you have lots of struggle meetings here. So, how did that affect healthcare? Well, many of these were doctors. Remember the Antis campaigns? They targeted bourgeois capitalist elements, and doctors were considered bourgeois capitalist elements. Even Mao's doctor, Li Jiusui, had to had to hide and cover up his bourgeois background lest he face persecution in these struggle meetings. He also had the Great Famine, 1958-62, to where 45 million people died. So was the healthcare provision in the countryside significant enough to counteract the detrimental effects of the Great Famine? Not really. Okay, The Great Famine and the, uh, the human tragedy of epic proportions made the healthcare negligible. He also had the Cultural Revolution, Whoa, more struggle meetings, where estimates put it that 2 million people were killed. Uh, in fact, doctors wanted to prove their loyalty to the regime, uh, so many of them stopped their operations and went into menial proletarian tasks, like cleaning the floors. And some doctors believed that pain was a bourgeois reaction. So what they did is they stopped using anesthetics. So, ooh, not very good for the patients. So what you have with these disruptions is, despite the advancements in healthcare provision, these disruptions proved highly detrimental to the success of healthcare policy. Okay? So that was a huge limitation, okay? So, thank you. Bye-bye.